Please welcome the Secretary of State for Education, Kit Malthouse, and his ministerial team. Are you sitting comfortably? Friends, of all the work uh, we've done together as a party and indeed of an, as a nation over the last uh, 12 years, in my view, the work of which we should be most proud is the work we've done in education. Wherever you look, there is a story of progress and success. We now have, of the 10 million kids who are in uh, school, about 8 million in good or outstanding schools. That's an enormous leap forward over the last 12 years. In literacy, we now have about 82% of kids at six reading fluently, rising to 91% at seven. We're at the highest level, at eighth in the World Literacy League table, our highest score that we've ever had. And these are enormous steps forward. 10 years ago, um, a very small number, well, not a very small, about 60% of kids were taking science at GCSE. We're now at 90%. History and geography at below 50%, now at 80%. It's a huge step forward. And at the same time, we've seen the record numbers of disadvantaged kids going through university over the last decade, as well as the incredible work we've done to turbocharge the skills agenda and the FE sector, opening up a whole new area of choice uh, for young people. And so that story of success is something which we as a team want to celebrate with you. Uh, over the next uh, two years, but also reflect on the fact that there's still an awful lot more to do. Right? This huge organisation, this vast uh, franchise, if you like, of, of UK, of England education, needs constant attention and constant pressure from us as demanding friends uh, to drive it forward. And we've set ourselves four key missions. First of all, on schools, we want to be much more assertive um, about intervention and standards. Looking for excellence in the basics, attendance, behavior, reading, writing, maths. You give kids those basic qualities and they'll generally fly. And that means that we need to be much more front-footed about talking to schools about what they can achieve. We've seen, as I said, vast progress in lots of schools, but there are still pockets that need our attention. And we need to reflect on the fact that there's nothing quite as persistent as people hanging on to mediocrity. Us finding it, challenging it, working with teachers, bringing all the schools up to the standard of the best will be a key part of our mission. Alongside that, the Prime Minister has asked us to play a big part in the growth agenda. And there are two key areas that we can do that. The first is on childcare. At the moment, we have a childcare system which is not really performing either for parents or indeed for providers. And so over the coming weeks, we'll be bringing forward new plans, not to tinker with the system, but to provide really strong support for those parents who want to go to work, want to take more hours, want to return to work, but also critically support for those families that want to make a decision about having children. You'll be hearing more about that in the months to come. And then the second area of the growth plan is, of course, this skills agenda. You know, we've made heavy investment in the apprenticeship scheme. There's still lots to do, and Andrew's going to be talking about that uh, shortly. But driving forward degree apprentices, where we've now seen you know, professional firms now, lawyers, accountants, seeing the value of this attracting more and more young people. Landing T-levels, launched successfully recently, now expanding out across the country. And of course, some of the boot camp work we've done to shift people's skills dynamically quite quickly, like we did last summer over HGV, right? Nobody's talking about the HGV license shortage now because we put five or 6,000 people through the system very quickly uh, to get them into those skills. So there's lots of work that we can do there. And then the, the fourth area, which Kelly is very focused on, is around child safety and safeguarding. You know, all of us have had to hold back tears when we've read some of those horror stories in the newspapers. Star Hobson, Arthur Lavinia Hughes, right? Really dreadful stories of neglect and horror that some people are, some kids are subjected to that have kind of caused us to question whether the system is working properly. And so a sharp focus on getting into those 80-odd thousand children across the country who are of concern and understanding what more we can do to protect them, we think is absolutely 
critical. So success, a story of progress, of millions of young people who are going through a much better system than they were over a decade ago, but still an agenda of intensity and work, and in many ways, a kind of acceleration of the mission. The transformation mission, which was begun 10, 12 years ago, has kind of reached a point at which we need to re-energize it and push it forward. All the thinking about education, training, skills over the last uh, 10 or 15 years has been conservative thinking. All the progress has come from this party and the work we've done with teachers. We've shown the country what can be done. We know what works. Now we need to spread that to every part of the nation so every child everywhere has the best that we can give them. And we'll all be dedicated to that because at the root of everything that we do, not just in our department, but everything we do at a government um, needs to be one simple question that we ask ourselves on a daily basis. And that question is, will the lives of our children be better than our lives? whether it's housing or health, the fight against crime or the growth plan. Right? They need growth, the next generation. If we can answer that question positively, then we will have done our job. And I think over the last decade, in education more than anything else, we can answer that question, will their lives be better than our lives, with an emphatic yes. So I hope those of you in the room who've been governors, who are teachers, who worked in education with young people, I hope you're proud of that work. I certainly am. And I hope you'll hear from us over the months and, and weeks to come that we will sing the praises of those who've done this work, of teachers, of parents, of schools, of multi-academy trusts, as we spread that success to every part of the, of the nation. Now, to do that work, I'm very lucky to have a fantastic ministerial team. And we were given a choice today about whether to give a speech or whether to, to have a, a conversation. I thought it was most useful for you to meet this critical team who are going to be part of the, of the story of success in the, in the months to come. Um, so I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their agendas. So first of all, Kelly. Kelly Tolhurst, we were elected on, in 2015. Now, you and I have shared a passion for some time, um, not just about schools, but about child safeguarding. You know, thinking about some of those really awful stories that we've seen and some of the frankly dreadful lives that vulnerable young people live and about what more we can do there to do to improve their lives. Now, as you introduce yourself, could you just talk about where you think that could go and what more we could do? Yeah, um, well, good afternoon, uh, everybody, and uh, thank you, Secretary of State. And um, as uh, the Secretary of State has outlined, I'm Kelly Tolhurst. Uh, I'm the Member of Parliament for Rochester and Strood, and absolutely thrilled to be the Minister for the new brief, uh, Schools and Childhood. And this is uh, a new brief that encompasses all elements of a child's childhood and uh, a real focus, uh, really trying to deliver on our mission to make sure that every child has a fulfilling childhood. Now, um, before I was elected as a Member of Parliament, uh, I was a, a chairman of a small charity running a children's centre within my uh, village, actually, where I live, where we were delivering support services to parents um, for nursery places, uh, parenting courses, cooking courses, uh, things like that. And that's really what started my passion, actually, about how, how are we able to develop policies and deliver services that really support our, our families, but also our our, our, our children. So that's one of the uh, key things that got me started. But also, um, my sister's a social worker, and I've worked with Looked After Children, and it's one of the things that has um, really driven uh, me in politics ever since we uh, got elected to deliver for those young people actually that don't have a great, don't have a big voice, and that is our Looked After Children. And too often, we are seeing poor outcomes for our looked after children. And that's something for me that is um, a strong driver to want to be in this role. And as um, Kit, the Secretary of State, asked the question about, you know, how do we protect children from harm? You know, how do we avoid those absolutely horrific stories that we've all read? And, and, and no one can not be touched by that. Mm -hmm. And we're lucky, under the leadership of our Secretary of State and our Prime Minister, 
You know, we are really clear that we will be working tirelessly and quickly in order to deliver a response to the three big reviews that have, been take, that have taken place. Uh, the independent uh, review into children's social care, um, the national panel review on uh, the awful cases with Arthur and Star, and uh, the CMA report. And we will intend to do that, but also launch an implementation strategy. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, if one thing that I can achieve while I'm in this role is changing outcomes for young people, particularly looked after children, or particularly those children who um, are living in families that do need support and who don't get access to it. And I will be working tirelessly with the, under the leadership of our Secretary of State to achieve that. Brilliant. So a tighter, firmer safety net. Very good. Yeah, no, that's good. A tighter, firmer safety net is exactly what we want. Now, next, our newest recruit, Jonathan Gullis, known to many of you, uh, but a former teacher. Um, Jonathan, as you introduce yourself, do you want to talk a little bit about the work we're going to do with teachers? Obviously, critical partners in success. So many of them now doing a fantastic job out there for kids. Uh, you've lived it. You've seen it. Uh, perhaps you, as you introduce yourself, you could talk a little bit about that agenda. No, thank you, Kit. And welcome, uh, everyone, and hello, conference. And I've said it so many times, and my colleagues are probably bored of it, <laughs> but I'm never bored of saying it, that I was proud to spend eight and a half years as a teacher, both in London and in this great city of Birmingham. <laughs> and what really upset certain uh, political opponents is that I was also a trade union representative for three and a half <laughs> of those years as well, working as a shop steward, hearing from our members as a member of the NSUWT. And I wanted to quickly, before I get to what Kid has asked, is to explain why education is so important to me. My mum and dad are the beneficiary of a great education system, but in different ways. It was my mother who got into grammar school off the council estate in London that gave her the opportunity to start her life. It was my dad who accessed the Open University to become first in our family to ever get a degree. My mum and dad then worked incredibly hard and were able to go and achieve success that people in their local area said wasn't possible. It was education that reminded me time and again that made it possible. But the real reason I fell into teaching, because my dad was a teacher and I was one of those that promised I'd never follow my dad into the profession, but it was working with a young girl called Hannah at Mabel Pritchard School in Oxford whilst I was volunteering in my second and third year at university, a girl with autism. And I, she was at the local SEND school and I used to go and help on the school trips as we went out. And to spend nearly two years with that young girl learning, trying to help her with her communication, teaching her very basic skills, but also teaching me about the importance of making sure that every child, regardless of their situation, should be cared for, should be loved, and should be, uh, have every opportunity available to them, made me realise that it was teaching that I wanted to go into. And I was delighted uh, to go into the profession, and never did I think, back in 2011, while I was doing my PGCE, that uh, I'd be sat on a stage as the Minister for School Standards. Uh, uh, I know maybe, maybe at the Institute of Education, whether they're proud to have me as former alumni or not, I'm not sure. But, you know, I was proud to study there and learn a lot. And I had some great tutors, Ben Hammond, Jeremy Hayward, who were excellent at guiding me through that process. And, you know, for me, there's some really key priorities. There is the education investment areas that were announced, those uh, 50 plus areas that I know Diana worked incredibly hard on before I entered the department. We've got those 24 priority areas. And it won't shock people that when Diana showed me her spreadsheet of those schools that, that have got two required improvements or inadequates, that they overlap absolutely with the priority in education investment areas. And we're going to go in and rip up. I won't nick Diana's number because I know it's her favourite number to do. But when you hear the number of kids in stuck in those schools, it's unacceptable. And we're not going to be ashamed to be interventionists to make sure those children have every opportunity because every day in a kid's life lost is another opportunity missed. And we can't allow that to happen. Are that we should be proud as a party on the national tutoring programme, and we haven't done enough celebration of that. Over two million, what I call opportunities, given to kids. And I was out across Sandwell and Wolverhampton only last week hearing from kids and from teachers who have benefited from this system, enabling those who are most disadvantaged to be able to catch up on their learning. And what was most important to me was kids saying that they had confidence to now sit in the classroom, and when they heard some of those uh, things, whether that be in science, maths, or English, taught to them. They felt that they belonged in the classroom. And that's what 
we've done with the National Tutoring Programme. So despite Labour's moaning and groaning, actually we've invested over £5 billion in catch-up, which is enormous. And then finally, as Kit said about the teaching profession, we've just accredited 179 teacher training providers, and that's because we're unashamedly pro high quality expectations of the teacher training courses that we want, making sure those teachers not only have an evidence-based led curriculum for them to deliver to their pupils, but the right mentoring that they desperately need. Because I was blessed at Blackfen School for Girls under Pete Patterson and Lola Blatch to get some world-class mentoring that meant that I felt confident entering the workforce. But you know, there'll be stuff that like the Early Careers Framework now, which is a two-year course with mentoring uh, and mentors trained as well. We've got these MPQs. I've got 60,000 fully funded MPQs I want every teacher to sign up and take, and they've been, again, robustly looked at, evidence-based and evidence-led, to make sure that we have teachers delivering in the classroom what we know works, rather than what pedagogy that some in the past want to live on, this idea that will deliver, even though it continues to fail too many children in our classroom. My role, as Kit said, is to champion teachers. I'll be unashamedly doing that. But I'll also be working with our trade unions to make sure that we are out there looking at how we can improve recruitment and retention, because we want every person to come into this workforce and realise what a great profession it is. Well done. Very good. Very good, and we're, we're very proud to have you, Jonathan, too. It's great to have you on the team. Uh, a longest standing member of the team, Diana Barron, who's been a member uh, in the department for a bit now, but very focused, as Jonathan said, on this issue of kids in 2 RI schools. A falling number, but one that we need to accelerate. Please, give us your, your take on that number. Uh, so lovely uh, to be here with you all, and as I have the enormous privilege of being the Education Minister in the House of Lords. But as the Secretary of State said, one of the things that I'm particularly focused on is those 700,000 children who are in schools that are failing and have failed for some time. And it's a small number in the context of the whole. As the Secretary of State said, our predecessors have done an extraordinary job in turning around our education system. But if you're a child in the secondary school in Knowsley, 50% of kids in Knowsley are in failing schools. That's just not okay. So I'm relentlessly focused on trying to bring that number down in partnership uh, with Jonathan and Kelly. Uh, and there's a how, there's what we want to do, which is bring that number down radically over the next two years. Uh, there's how we want to do it, which is uh, incentivizing quality and educational outcomes for our children. And there's why we want to do it. And as Lord Harris, who set up Harris Academies, um, said, you can make a mistake with your first job, you can make a mistake with your second job, your third job, there's still a fourth job, but you only get one education. We want our children to have a great education. For you, very good. And then, uh, French, last but not least, Andrew Jenkins, who many of you will know, who's our skills minister, mm -hmm. looking at FE and HE. Now, critical to our skills agenda, Andrea, is the participation of employers. Mm. Right? We can lead a horse to water, but we can't make it drink. As you introduce yourself, perhaps you could talk about the work you're going to do to bring more businesses yeah. in to offer apprenticeships, because we're not short of applicants. Right. Lots of young people want to do them. We now need places. Completely agree, Secretary of State. I'm, I'm very proud to be part of this um, whole skills agenda because, to me, we are future-proofing our economy. Um, so I think a, a big focus for me is actually looking at, um, as you, you rightly said, Secretary of State, is um, engagement with employers um, and how can we make the process easier for employers because especially if you're a one-man band uh, where you wear several hats it can't be a cumbersome process it's got to be easy um, and on top of that though what I'd like to focus on what are the emerging industries what are the skills needed for our economy of tomorrow as a lot of people might know I'm very pro-Brexit and I think this is an opportunity I want to see these homegrown skills and so and other things that I really want to focus on um, are not only um, is access to education. 
Um, to me, um, for too long, the focus has always been on, on um, academia. And I think that, um, you know, we've got to be proud of our academia, the universities. You know, we have some of the greatest universities um, in this world. And part of my brief is international education. And I'll certainly be selling, um, you know, this um, across the globe. Um, but, but the other aspect, I think um, we need to actually ensure that not only at teacher level, at parent level, um, in, uh, throughout the education, landscape that um, vocational qualifications and technical qualifications are seen as equally as important. Um, so raising that esteem, I think, is definitely going to be a focus. And another thing we should be proud of is um, look, we, the amount of apprenticeships we've had is amazing. Um, I was speaking to um, uh, somebody who'd worked in the sector for over 30 years, and she told me that under, um, under um, Brown's government, she, She'd really try to push him to actually mention apprenticeships once per year. And, and look at us where we're at now, it's amazing. We've, we've currently got you know, um, 300,000 um, apprenticeships on the go at the moment. And, uh, but on top of that, it's the T-levels. I mean, I went to the Northwest and on T-level results day, and I wish I could bottle that energy I saw there. The students were coming up to me and saying, it's changed their lives. You know, getting that work experience is a great social mobility manoeuvre. You know, not everybody, um, it's easy for middle class families to actually um, get the work experience, get the internships in MPs' offices. But working class backgrounds, you know, like myself, like many on this panel, um, it, it's much harder to have those opportunities. To, so to actually have the work experience element that apprenticeships and T-levels offer on the CV, we're really giving a better start um, to those young people. And finally, um, second... Oh, we've got one person clapping. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and finally, Secretary of State, um, I'm, I'm immensely proud of what we're bringing in 2025. It's a lifelong learning entitlement. So um, if you think learning is not all about school leavers, and I think this is going to be so important that what, whatever, we're, we're really changing the way the landscape um, of education is funded. And this is really going to help those, those um, uh, people who look after um, loved ones, um, people who have been out of the jobs market or was never trained before. It gives them some great opportunities and flexibility in the learning system. So I think that's an in incredibly exciting place to be. Brilliant. Well. Friends, the flashing number is telling me that we're out of time, but I hope uh, that you've got a sense of the enthusiasm and commitment from the team, uh, because as Jonathan said, we are all appraised of the fact uh, that every day counts. Those of us who've been lucky enough to have children will know that they don't hang about. They're gone in a flash. They grow up in a blink, um, and that just a week, a day, a month of substandard, missed education, whether it's in college, university, or right through the school system, can have a huge impact on their life chances. We've brought about, over the last decade, enormous success, a huge leap forward. We recognize that the work we're doing is building on that success. But now we need to be impatient and demanding on behalf of all those kids that we're looking after, making sure that they get the best that they can, the best foundation they can, to build a really fantastic life for themselves in our wonderful country. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you.